I lose the sense of motivation and the sense of to prove something as a basketball player, it's time for me to move away from the game of basketball. And I had been with him weeks before at the last game of the finals. No one knew. Quote, unquote, I'm back. That's the most impactful two words ever. He didn't really say anything until you know, he announced via his fax that he was back. Coming May 28th, this is Sports Uncovered. I'm back. Coming up on the Under Center Podcast, what's it like when one son of a Chicago sports legend sits down and talks with another son of a sports legend? That's coming up next. What it means to me to be a Chicago Bear, it's an easy question. It means everything to me. It means rich tradition, uh, black and blue division, defense, legends, linebackers. The history of it. I mean, I'm a big history guy, so understanding this was one of the first franchises just kind of blows my mind, honestly, that I was able to be a part of that. The city, uh, just the... The nostalgia of playing for a story franchise, the story franchise of the running back position with guys like Gail Sayers and Walter Payton and being able to follow in those footsteps. So being a bear means everything. I mean, what more can you say? The Under Center Podcast is being brought to you by the Sprinkler Fitters Union Local 281, protecting Chicagoland for over 100 years. Welcome in. I'm Lawrence Holmes, and I... I'm excited for you to hear from our guest, Jarrett Payton. I've known Jarrett since he was a little kid. And to give you some background, worked at the score for forever. Before I started working here at NBC Sports Chicago, when I first started working at the score, I was one of the producers of the Walter Payton show. So I got the opportunity to meet one of my idols when he would come in and do his radio show. It's one of my favorite memories of of working in radio was the opportunity to be around that guy who had an incredible sense of humor and timing and he always made it fun always made it fun i'm glad that i forged a a great relationship with jared payton who works over at channel nine doing sports over there doing a great job with our buddy dan roan and i love that jared enjoys sharing the legacy of his father And that's what we got into today. What I didn't know is how connected. I had the poster back in the day where you see Walter Payton and Michael Jordan, Andre Dawson on the poster. But I didn't know that Michael Jordan and Walter Payton actually hung out. And some of those gambling stories about Michael Jordan showing up to people's houses and playing cards all night. Well, Jared's got one of those, too. So we talk about what made those two guys the best at what they did and how they were similar. Jared Payton sits down on this episode of the Under Center podcast to talk about Michael Jordan. You are the son of a legend. And I know that that you have a relationship with the Jordans. So, So walk me through what it was like to be the son of a legend and a friend of a legend. Listen, Lawrence, I, I just, I got chills. You can't even see it. I just got chills. When I look at Jeffrey and Marcus, they were younger than me. So I saw them from afar. And Jeffrey and I just did an interview a couple of weeks ago for the first time of us actually really sitting down and talking. And both of us had this, these smiles on our faces, like, yo, this is way, it's been way too long. We should have been doing this a long time ago because he said it and I said it. There's, there's not a lot of people that know what we went through growing up. And both of us, we have, we have that feeling. We know what it was like uh, for me in the eighties. And then like early nineties, when my dad got done, like, we just couldn't go out to eat. We couldn't go to a restaurant and just sit down and eat, Um, especially in that 85, 86. I mean, it was it was too crazy. We had to be in a side room, you know, and us like eating as a family that way. And I think that's that's the crazy part. And so now growing up and almost being 40 and having a relationship with him now and talking with him, we both have seen how our lives are so similar, even though we didn't have 
that much communication growing up. Did Jordan ever come to the house? Yeah, man. Jordan came to the house. Yeah, it's the, the legendary story. I always talk about how he um, he rang the doorbell and my dad gave that whistle that he had that. <laughs> so I ran upstairs and it was dark outside. We had two front lights on, but I couldn't see. We had lights everywhere, but I couldn't see. And I could see this silhouette of this big, tall dude, man, bald head earring and I'm like who is this and I open up the door and as I open it up I look and it's MJ he's got two dudes behind him and a guy right to his right and I'm like holy cow and he was like yo is your dad here and I was like yo <laughs> I, 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 I'm speechless dude I was just outside shooting a Bulls basketball with his name on it the fake autograph like I was just out shooting this ball and I'm like yo and my mouth dropped and he was like, is your dad here? And I was like, yo, um, man, my dad told me not to let any strangers in the house, you know? Like, I'm not supposed to let strangers in. And he was like, man, it's cold out here. And next thing you know, only I would say what I said to Michael Jordan, I was like, yo, well, you missed a couple free throws, man, the other night, man. <laughs> if you, if you could have seen his face, like his, like, is this little dude talking to me like that? And my dad came and gave me this forearm shiver, man. And I like just moved to the side. My mom just waxed the floor, Lawrence, just waxed it. And where he threw me over to was the coat room. And that coat room had my mom's fur coats and my dad's coats that he got from Burt Reynolds because Burt Reynolds would send my dad a leather coat every single Christmas. So... Mike comes in and it was like, hey, what's up, Walt? And my dad's like, what's up, MJ? And as for a kid, these are my two favorite athletes. Not only two favorite athletes, both my favorite athletes and the dude who used to ground me when I got in trouble. So it was like, you know, it, it was just this weird feeling. So I took his coat and we put our company's coats on our washer and dryer. They went downstairs. We had an atrium in the middle of the house with like glass everywhere. And I could see my dad shuffling cards. And my dad and Mike were about to go at it. And my dad whistled again. So I ran downstairs and I was like, Pops, what do you need? He says, I don't need anything. Mike needs you. I said, Mike, listen, I'm your assistant for the night, man. Whatever you need, I got you. I'm like, you, you're thirsty. It's probably a Gatorade outside with your face on it. Like right now I can go get you. He's like, nah, little man, I need you to go get the money in my pocket. I was like, I got you. Lawrence, if you would have timed my 40-yard dash at that moment, man, it was 4-1. I hit upstairs, and I hit the kitchen, and right when I hit the kitchen where it go right to go into our laundry room, my sister came out, Brittany, and she had these little pigtails, and I gave her a stiff arm to the face. I said, moves! <laughs> Yo, she slid across the floor. I go into Mike's pockets, man, and he's just got money rolled up in rubber bands, and I'm taking it down to him in bundles, and I put it on the table, and he gives me $5. I was like, thanks, Mike. And I ran upstairs, put in my piggy bank. And about two hours later, man, I hear the whistle again. And my dad just count money in his hand. And like, Mike is just like this, man. And so my dad looks at me, looks at Mike, hand me a hundred bucks, man. He was like, tell Mike, thanks. I was like, thanks, Mike. And I ran upstairs. I ended the night with a hundred and five dollars, man. And those two battled at everything that you could imagine from Miss Pac-Man to pool to we had space invaders. We had, we had, we had everything, man. And they were up to about three in the morning. And I remember getting up that next morning, Lawrence and asking my dad, I said, dad, why were you guys up so late? He says, son, when you get two people like us in a room, nobody wants to lose. And I didn't get it. I didn't understand. Fast forward, dad takes me to a Bulls Knicks game and Jordan had an unbelievable game. And after the game, he's like, yo, we're going to go see Mike. So as we start walking down the corridor to go see Mike, man, I'm watching all of my sports cards walk past me, man. Like everybody, I'm just like, this is crazy. And they're all talking about where they're going, who's driving, you know, looking at the rings and, and all that stuff. And I was like, this is why I want to be a professional athlete. Like it was, it was that, that picture in my head of like, talking about the fancy cars and all that stuff. Like, I love playing sports, but those those shiny things always got me. And I'm watching these guys. And I'm thinking Mike's going to come out, you know, rocking a, you know, drinking a Gatorade with his face on it, 
you know, probably a nice little coat and hoop earring. And Jordan came out with a cutoff shirt, shorts, and new pair of fresh J's. And he talked to my dad for about 10 minutes. And while everybody else was going to go out and do their thing, Mike was putting in work. He was never satisfied with just the 30 points, eight boards, and five assists. Like, that wasn't it. Like, his goal was to be the best. And he knew he could take his game up another notch. And it was at that moment where it, like, hit me like a ton of bricks. I get it now. Like, I get it. This is what it's about. And my dad had a funny way of showing me whether it was the life lessons or things just happened that way of showing me how to work. And not just by him, because he knew me being his son, like, I adored him, but, like, he was the guy that grounded me. So I didn't want to hear from him all the time. I didn't want to, you know, I I wasn't old enough to understand what the hill meant and how he worked out, right? But he knew that if there was another person that I admired, that he could actually show me through them. And that's what he did in that moment. And ever since that moment, man, it's that moment changed my life. And that's why I got the work ethic that I have now. And it's a part of my dad and watching Mike. And so that's why this Last Dance documentary has just been, it's reliving these moments and the great times, the good times that I have with my dad, just alone, the two of us going to see a basketball game. Now I'll never forget the old stadium. Every every time he would, my dad would get up before the game was over. It was crazy. We would walk back and that back end would stand up and start clapping for him on every single game. I got chills again, every single game, man. And it's just bringing back really, really good memories. Fire sprinklers don't work without water. Get your building's fire pump tested ASAP. Go to sprinklerfitterschicago.org or call 708-597-1800. Sprinkler Fitters Union Local 281 protecting Chicagoland for over 100 years. I was going to ask you if your, your dad being your dad, where clearly, you know, we, we all idolized him. And if, if Walter Payton had said to us like hard work and all of these things, like you're like, yes, sweetness. Absolutely. Yes. I'm do you. But since you're his son, it's a harder message for him to convey. So what better vessel to convey the message of hard work than from the greatest basketball player that's ever lived? Lawrence, Lawrence, let me tell you, you, you don't, this whole interview, man, I'm getting chills this whole time. This is, it's bringing back so many memories. My dad, he gave me this book after my junior year and he told me, listen, you want to get a scholarship? I had one full ride from Northern Northern Illinois. He's like, you want to get more scholarships? Take this book and do whatever's in this book. And it was just stuff at the track, like four 100s, six 200s, you know, all this stuff, little sprints. And I was like, holy cow. And I did it like the first couple of weeks. And then one week I decided to like scratch off a little bit cause my girlfriend wanted to go to the movie. So I put some water on my chest and came back home. And he was like, so did you work out? And I was like, yeah, dad, I worked out. It was at Barrington high school. And my dad goes, come here re- real quick. And he brings me down to his office. And as we go down to his office, he's got a video camera and he hooks it up to the TV. My dad was on the side videotaping me the entire time. He was like, you you didn't do everything you were supposed to get back out there and finish and man it was those moments that i remember the most how fun is watching the last dance been for you it's been amazing man it's uh it's 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 one of those things where you you bring back being a teenager in chicago right and growing up at that time it's an amazing feeling to be able to see what that team and those teams did and how the legacy of them is so special. And then also to, to see the determination of Michael Jordan and what he did on a daily basis to be great. Uh, I mean, people don't, they don't get it. They think it's all just smoke and mirrors. And I think that really like rip the, 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 the screen off of him a little bit. Like I want to be like Mike was great, but to rip it off and to be able to see, him sitting on that couch smoking that cigar saying I know I'm done like this is too much and and I don't think people see that I think people never get a chance to see that they think that because you're famous all these things are great life is great and yeah it probably is you get a I saw it with my dad things were a lot easier like you know you get pulled over by a cop and he's like oh well how you doing Mike how you doing 
hey, slow down. You know what I mean? Where the regular average Joe is like, yo, this is a $300 ticket. Like, see you in court. Yeah, and there, yeah. Are, there are legendary stories about Jordan on the shoulder of the Edens making his way to to the west side and and everyone knew if you saw the ferrari going by you knew who it was it was yeah. mike and he was trying to get to the game so move out the way yeah and it's just it, it's thinking about those things but not everything else that's put on your shoulders and you know when you play for this city it's it, it's a lot man my dad told me it, it was a lot and I, a reason why he his determination not to set out games when he was hurt because he loved the people of Chicago. They treated him like family. People forget that he's from Jackson. He, he grew up in Mississippi and Columbia and that he went to Jackson State. People think he's from Chicago just because of what he did here. It's And Michael, too, they just, when you say those names, you think of Chicago. And he always carried that in his heart. And Mike does, too, man. It's just... Anybody that wants to say that you can name all these other people, like whoever you want, like they can have LeBron, you could have all these other comparisons. Jordan is at the top. Man. There's no doubt in my, in my mind. And I don't think we've ever seen anybody work as hard to be great. Like it, it, it takes a lot. And I, I'm watching this with my son and he said the same thing. He was like, dad, like, Mike was good, like, growing up, but he wasn't like LeBron. I was like, no, nah, he didn't have this national growing up like he was going to be the king and save basketball. Like, he worked for all of that. And it's just a testament to his will. It's a testament to the hard work and also, to his parents. Because now I see it as a dad who has a kid that plays sports and how you're supposed to really, like, you know, really nurture these kids and cultivate these kids and really help them grow, but also be their parent and also know that school's involved in, in athletics and to see how his parents did that. I don't think they get enough credit for how they molded their son and especially their other kids as well. Do you think that your dad and, and MJ vibe because they were two Southern guys that were thrust into the spotlight in a big city? Lawrence, I think they, I think they click because of, their their willingness to and their 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 want to like they they wanted to be the best i think it was their desire to be great is what brought them close together that's what it was it was their desire to be the greatest to, to want to be on that pedestal whether it was people said you were the best or you they just wanted to be in that conversation and some people just want to get by they just like oh i'm cool i'll take second place i placed my dad and Jordan were like, no, like when it's all said and done, I want to say I left it all on the field and the court. And I want to be in that debate where people say that I'm the best and I'm in that conversation because there's there's not a lot of people in those conversations when you're talking about, it, especially not in sports. And like I said, man, if you're in the top five, you can people can maneuver that top five however they want to. But when you can say I'm top five, I mean, it's, that's, a, that's a big deal, man. Jared, I had someone break it down to me like this, and, and I'll let you go off of this response. If you're talking about the greatest that's ever done something, it's incumbent that that person, that there be no argument that during the time that they played, there was a point where they were the best, period. And I think with Michael Jordan, clear. And I think with your dad, that's clear. There's a chunk of time where he is the best running back in the NFL. So once you get past that, you can then make claim to being the greatest of all time. But if there's any question on who the best player is during your era, yes. then you don't get to be on the list. You don't get to be on the list, man. You don't. And that was the coolest part of talking to Jeffrey because we both were like looking at each other and – and I was going like this to him and he was doing that to me. And I was like, yo, this is, this is insane. And when you, when you are the best or you feel like you're the best or you're in that conversation, you don't have to tell anybody. Hmm. You don't, you don't, you don't have to mention it. I never once heard my dad ever say that I'm the best all around football player. I'm the best running back or whatever it is. He never said that. He always respected his peers he always wanted to drive them into the dirt, into the ground when he was playing against them, but he respected those guys. 
And it's funny, Lawrence, because there was like maybe running backs wise, the names that came out of my dad's mouth, um, Jim Brown, Barry Sanders, Emmett Smith, Gail Sayers. Those are, those are the running backs while he was alive that I heard him come out of his mouth. Those are the guys who he talked about. And um, all those guys, it's a testament to how they worked as well, but they all had something special about them as well. And so, um, man, it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy. I wish my dad was around so we could sit and watch The Last Dance because it would bring back so many memories. And I wish I had an iPhone back in those days because, man... Could you imagine my Instagram account with Jordan Kane in my house? I would have been blown up. <laughs> man, Jared, I love you, man. I, I appreciate you uh, continuing to tell great stories about a great man and, and sharing your stories about MJ, too. Thanks for, for being on the podcast, brother. I appreciate it. Love you, too, man. As always, I'm glad you're well, and hopefully everybody that's watching as well is doing well, too. That's Jared Payton. And it's hard to get great stories like that. Even with the last dance, the idea of Michael Jordan and Walter Payton playing cards till four in the morning. What would you have paid to have been in that room? Like think like seriously, your own money, not fake money. How much of your own money would you have paid to just be able to watch that interaction I'd be willing to open up my savings for real for real so thanks to Jared Payton for being on the podcast thanks to you for listening to the podcast it's much appreciated do us a favor tell someone about the under center podcast because we do all sorts of crazy stuff my guys Brian Perez Cam Ellis, JJ Stankovitz, they are all over it. Adam Hogue, we got Adam Hogue on the team now? You out of your mind? We got Hogue on the team? Give this podcast five stars. Do us a favor and write a review. Thanks so much for listening. We'll keep churning out the good Bears content. Talk to you soon.